Barrett, the oldest continually operating stadium in the NFL, as you get a look inside Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Tonight, we finish off week six with a good Monday nighter between the New Orleans Saints and the Green Bay Packers. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. here is going to fall incomplete. Defensively here, you're facing a top five team in terms of points scored in the NFL. So when they're that high powered, you've got to find a way to hold them under 20 because to me, that's the magic number. 20 points scored gives yourself your, you give yourself your best chance to win. So if they're up around 24, 28, 30, they could be in some trouble. And I think so because then you turn it into a shootout and that means your offense has to keep pace. Good work after the catch. Gets them 15 and a first down. down. Wide open receiver complete. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. That's another gain of 15 on back-to-back -back plays. So in Saints territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 43. Mahomes now to throw. Almost able to intercept it. That's one he would have liked to have held on to on this first drive. Instead, second down. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. Now it's Mahomes again. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Cole Beasley, the intended target, and it's third down. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. And again, it's Mahomes. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. Here come the Saints for their opening drive. They'll be led out by their veteran quarterback, the former Purdue Boilermaker. It's Drew Brees. Okay, I'm not taking a turn to negative town, even though it's going to sound like it. The two interceptions he threw last week, those obviously have to be eliminated, and that was the focus of practice this week. But let's face it, he did throw three touchdowns. And they got the win. And they got the win, so I think it was a good week for him to work on things. Had some positives, the win being for, first and foremost. Now he's just got to eliminate those interceptions. That one whistled against a big right tackle. You'd think being able to fire out and block would be a lot easier to not commit a holding penalty, but it's tough to keep those guys right in front, isn't it? They fake the give. Here's Breeze. The first catch of the game for George Kittle. A big-time play there for New Orleans. 48 yards. What a luxury to have a tight end that can not only catch it, but then can run after the catch like that. What was the old expression back in the good old days that they used to carry pianos yeah. on their backs when they were ca after they hey, caught the football? Lady, Someone would stop and bang out a tune along the way as well. <laughs> but nowadays, these guys are essentially bumped-up wide receivers, and they are a fourth part of the passing game. And we see a lot of big plays, as we just saw there. They had the huge play last time. Here it is a much smaller gain of two. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Breeze now to throw. Packer pressure, and down he goes. Taco Charlton. He's the one that got home and takes him down for a loss of nine. Third and long now after the sack of Breeze and the Saints up against it here. Here's Breeze. And a throw there going to be incomplete. 
You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender was making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything to warrant to the flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. Here comes the Saints punter now. Waiting on it will be Richie James. And they'll let this one go right on the outskirts of the 10. They'll down it at the 11-yard line. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. Now a throw for the all-pro. Kelsey is complete. A gain of six there on first. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. On play action, it's Mahomes. Josh Doxson's got it complete. And he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. 16 yards, a first down. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. From the gun, it's Mahomes. And this is caught. I think he got that with one hand. Got to love the catch. I think you got to love the gloves as well. <laughs> yeah, these one-handed catches, that was great. And they're fun. They've become a little more ho-hum, aren't they? Yeah, they really are. And I know that it sounds like we're taking credit away from the guys, and we don't mean that at all. They really work hard on this one-handed catch thing. I think that he's into the clear. 20. Touchdown, Packers. Marlon Mack, his first touchdown on the year as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. On is Mason Crosby for the point after. And it's good to make it 7-0 Packers. A drive there of just four plays. And the end result was a Marlon Mack touchdown run. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine for the 26. Shotgun now for Breeze. Over the middle, that's complete to McCaffrey. The catch and run, good for 24 yards. And this is why trying to cover the angle route is so difficult. Anyone playing the linebacker position, when they see a running back out of the backfield widen, because he heads towards the flat first. Oftentimes, you widen too much and overcommit. He cuts up inside, and that's what we saw there. A nice pickup for a first down. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Andy Isabella was the intended target, and that'll bring up second down. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. From midfield, here's Breeze. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you go make a play on the football. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Terrence Mitchell. And he'll return this ball across midfield to the 47-yard line. Oh, 
timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot. And if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there. And sure enough, this one's going the other way. They'll run on first down with Marlon Mack. I think that's Mack who's still down. Yeah, it is. Mack apparently shaken up there. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. Mahomes going to throw. To the right side, it's Kelsey. And he's going to be out of bounds down around the 35-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and put the down marker back to one. Mahomes now 6 of 10 of this first town. He's got his guys a first down here. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. They'll run for the first time with Tevin Coleman. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that'll make it third and 13. Two running plays go backwards. So what's the call on third and 13 now? Working from the gun, Mahomes. Well, the two men come together, and it's incomplete. Excellent work defensively. Brings up fourth down. They yeah, good game catch the ball at the backfield a week ago, and they're going to try and involve him in that way in this game as well. But you can tell scouting is taking over. They're making it a little bit more difficult. Yeah, defensively, they told us, hey, we've got to take him out of the passing game, limit it to oh, just got, short runs, because he can really good impact job, this team. offense. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. And this is a unit that, to be frank, doesn't look like they've woken up yet. I mean, a punt and a turnover on their first two drives. And I think the game's starting to take shape a little bit now. And I'm going to take it to the basketball world. When you're having trouble scoring or moving the ball in basketball, what do they do? Get it to their best player, right? Find a matchup, create it, exploit it, and try and move the football. From just shy of midfield, Breeze got this complete to the rookie out of UMass, Andy Isabella. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. And just on Wednesday, he was named the NFC Offensive Player of the Week for that over 100-yard performance he had last week. Deservedly so, and I enjoyed our time with him and asked him how he got it done. What did he see? And he said, film study, watching what the defenses were going to present, understanding how to... Got a man, it's caught at the six-yard line. And he just falls short down at the one-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. That's just flat out a beautiful throw right there. It was a rope. That's maybe the speed you would see on a slant, but he threw that downfield with that kind of pace. Now, if he throws that one with any type of arc, puts a little air under it, that play doesn't happen. He had to fire it in there, and he did exactly that. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. So they're backed up to the three-yard line, second and goal. They'll try to run this one in. And he takes it across and into the end zone. Touchdown, Saints. A great play there. His fifth touchdown now on the year as his guys are on the board here in this first quarter.
On that sideline, they're saying that was more like it. The first down run went backwards, that time into the end zone. And I like their little bit of courage and play calling, too, because after an unsuccessful run, especially one where you lose yardage, you oftentimes go right to throwing the football. They came right back with a running play, and it paid off handsomely. Will Lutz on for the point after. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. Five plays there on that drive. And it ends with a three-yard scoring run. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. This fielded at the two. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. And they have been disruptive in the passing game, as we're going to see here. And it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone. Eventually, you cover a guy in your area. And those windows that quarterbacks are seeking to throw into, they're closed in this game. About set to get this drive started. The Green Bay offense at the line. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. It's a first down on a gain of 10. These two teams all tied after one. Back for the second quarter in Green Bay. It's the Packers in possession of the football. Here's Mahomes to throw. It's Kelsey on the ground. Give him a couple on the catch at second and eight. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. Looking to throw again on second down. Mahomes, and he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. 11 yards there, first down. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. To throw, it's Mahomes. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. Holding offense. So a decent game, first but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Shotgun snap to Mahomes. Got a man, that's Rashard Higgins. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. A good pick up there of 20 yards. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender. And that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. They'll run on first down. It's Mack. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. They'll try and run for this with Mack. Uh-oh, he is going nowhere as he is enveloped behind the line. They end up getting stuck twice after that nine-yard gain back on first down. Remember, that was less than a yard. That was not a full yard. That defense, they were having none of it. Yeah, the surge the offensive line was seeking actually occurred on the other side of the ball. They reestablished the line of scrimmage and stuffed him. So he gets a shot at atoning for the earlier miss here in the first half and able to knock it through. And what a relief for him, don't you think? Because how many games have we done where kickers missed one early? and never gotten a chance to atone for it the rest of the game. That's a lot to carry around. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. 
Out comes Christian McCaffrey with the rest of the offense. And we checked the rushing numbers so far here into week six, and the returns have been really good. Now, you're starting to hit that stride middle of the season toward the end. They're certainly hoping they can keep up this production. They are because one of the adages in the NFL is that defense travels and defense endures even in bad weather, right? You know what else does? A good running game. And people want that, especially as you head down the stretch. You may play outdoors in some nasty stuff. You're trying to get to the playoffs. This is the time to get it going. And individually, I don't think you should just think about a 1,000 yards either. The bar has to be set higher with this beginning. And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. Up front, the struggles continue for this offense among the line. What, what can they do? Change the play calling? What? I think part of that, yes, changing some of the play calls, some screens, some draws, some misdirection. You want to run any type of a play that will influence these guys to continue to get upfield and find a way to use that against them and slip things in behind them. So some quick passes could work as well. The positioning here is key. As a defensive back, you're taught 99% of the time, make a play on the football. But in this case, making a play on the man was all the difference. That's what forced the incompletion. Patrick Mahomes on his way out for their next drive. I'm sure he wanted to have a huge game, wants to have a huge game as the quarterback, but really on the ground, they've been very, very hard to stop. Maybe you just keep going to that well. I think so, and isn't it funny how the definite... And the Saints pressure gets him. Brought down for a sack. Geno Atkins, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. Protection certainly going to need to be a bit better here on second and 16. On second down, here's a run with Mack. And that'll hurt the average a bit as this time they're able to get him behind the line. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. Me and you all day, all day. I'm coming after you. On third and long, it's Mahomes. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. Had to pass there, third and long on your own side of the field. Just couldn't come up with anything. That's why teams always talk about having to win the early downs, meaning you've got to gain yardage and set yourself up for third and short because when it's third and long, the odds go down significantly trying to pick up the first down, even throwing the football. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so well, else. and maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try to hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Snap comes at one, and now Breeze. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Even in today's NFL, when we think of the tight end position now as really a glorified wide receiver, we're still asking a lot of those guys. They have to block as well. But every now and then, they don't come down to the football. It's complete here to T.Y. Hilton. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. Ready. Yellow lady, yellow lady. Quit talking about it. Let him bring it. Out. On first down, this is McCaffrey. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two. And it brings up second down. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. To throw, it's Breeze. Throw left side. McCaffrey's got it. 
Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. Now Breeze. And that will be incomplete. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. And Lutz's kick is good, and that will knot us up at 10. So that's a seven-play drive that ultimately stalls out there at the end. Now, things were a little leaky in the beginning on that drive, weren't they? But how about the front seven? As they got closer to their goal line, Things stiffened a little bit towards the field goal. All level now at 10 apiece as the kick's away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. On second down, it's Coleman. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Yes, indeed, that play there, that reminds me of some of the guys that I played with that have that suddenness, able to get into the backfield almost about the time the ball snapped and make a play. How about that tackle for a loss? Yeah, absolutely. He did a lot of that last week when he was named the NFC Defensive Player of the Week. One of the guys on the team was saying, hey, yeah, we called him the disruptor, and that's carrying forward again. Makes sense, doesn't it? A great return there of 22 yards. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. Ready? The Saints offense on the field ready to get their drive started. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I've never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you've met fan bases that wanted that, that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants a drive to end with a kick, <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. We've already seen him catch a few passes out of the backfield in the first half, unable to connect on that one. Certainly seems like getting him the ball out of the passing game, though, is part of their game plan. It certainly is because he catches it well, creates a mismatch. You're going to cover him with a linebacker, a corner, a safety. They felt like he can win every battle. Now yet another incompletion here as they fail to connect on third. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. Right. There's You're nothing right. available You're there right. for him. 154 left on the clock here in quarter number two. Coming up at the half, a reminder, we go back to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman and have a look back at our first half as well as a look ahead to what's coming up later this weekend. The throw on the quick slant going to be complete, and he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out, and by a few inches, that'll be a first down. So first and 10 now from the 30. Mahomes now to throw. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. The Packers on third down. A pretty woeful 0 for 5 thus far. Here it's third and two. Now here's Mahomes. And that is incomplete. 
Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decided to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. 45 yards, that's what the punt goes for. Five on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Out is the Saints offense now as they get ready to take over here. And we're under a minute to go here. What's been an even first half all tied up? Yeah, still time to make something happen, too. A couple completions just string them together. Could get in the field goal range. Let's see what happens. Check out three. Check four. Check four. The drive begins with a run by McCaffrey. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far. And after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going. And really, the offensive line not helping him much. They'll keep it on the ground again here. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Holding offense. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. McCaffrey following the penalty. And he'll just keep two hands on the football as he'll be taken down after a short pickup. The Packers going to use one of their timeouts as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. The Saints on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This is third and 14. Throwing now is Breeze. Able to find Isabella. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. Throwing on first down is Breeze. Left side here taken in by Metcalf. And he's able to get this to the 40-yard line before he's out of bounds. This game not quite as good as the last, but still over 40 yards between the two. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. That's leaking to the right, and he missed it by a foot or two. It's no good. So we are at halftime here on a Monday night. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman. And okay, so much for our halftime break. Apparently we're going to get right back to it. And ready to get the party started for the second half. It was an even first half, all tied on the scoreboard. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Out come the Saints now. They'll go on offense first here to begin the third quarter. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that'll give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. That'll set them back with a loss of three on the play. And that'll make this a second and 13. You know what the key to a good screen pass is, don't you? But you're going to tell me good blocking? Well, good blocking eventually. But first, it's good acting. You want to let the defenders go past you, leak out to whichever side or even in the middle where you want to set up the screen, and then you do your blocking. How about the read, though, by the defensive guys? They weren't fooled at all and actually ran with the lineman to where the play was and smothered it for a loss of yardage. Throwing again on second down. Breeze. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. From the gun, it's Breeze. And able to haul it in is Kittle. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. Now after the completion, we're going to get a timeout. An injured player. We'll check on his status when we get back. 
action. Ready. Hey, kill, kill. Kill, kill. Here we go, here we go. Shotgun handoff now to McCaffrey. And this has been a recurring theme tonight for sure. Nowhere to run. Back to the line of scrimmage, that's all. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. So, Charles, tie game here. What are your keys as we continue to play this second half? I know people think it's always trite when you say the same things over and over, but they're tried and true in the game of football. Who's going to block better? Who's going to tackle better? In this case, to me, it's turnovers. You've got to take care of the football in order to win the game. Now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. We've seen these defenses make enough opportunistic plays to keep this one low scoring. Flying around, making plays on the ball, and we see yet another errant throw as a result. Here comes the Saints punter now, as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. Fair catch signaled for and taken at about the 15-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the Packer drive will start from deep in their own territory with a first and 10. On first and 10, here's Mahomes. The tight end, Kelsey, has it over the middle. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late face flag mask. as well. Defense. I think this one's going to be a face mask. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they'll march up another 15 against your squad. Give him six on the play, and that'll make this a second down. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. They fake the give. Now Mahomes. He's got a man on the crossing route. That's more. 23 yards the pickup there. He gets his first catch there, but all in all, when you're talking about the number one receiver in the NFL coming into this game, and we're just talking about the first catch there, I think they're doing a nice job of bottling him up. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Working from the gun, Mahomes. Looking left side, that's caught by Moore. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Mahomes now on first down. Dotson with a grab over the middle. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Throw left side complete. It's Moore. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. A field goal would get him the lead, but that's not what they're shooting for as they come up on third down. Mahomes to throw once more. And it's complete to Kelsey. And he gets the first down yardage he needs before he's brought down at the six. It's a gain of six as they're able to convert, and now it's first and goal. They go play action here on first down. And this is caught. For the moment, it's a touchdown, but multiple flags down, so let's sort this out. So reverse the celebration. We'll see if they have something else in their bag of tricks. And isn't that always tough to watch when they score and you see the excitement and then when they realize those points aren't going to count? Can they get it back together and find their way back to the end zone? Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. Get your backs to the goal line. I can hear my high school coach right now. This is when force meets force. Got to be physical in order to win this battle. <laughs> yeah, that's where the physicality pays off. A nice job forcing the contact and forcing the incompletion. Yeah, Coach Ford would have loved that play. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. Not only did they drop what looked like an interception in the end zone, they blew a golden opportunity to shift the momentum.
And the 13-year man puts it through. And they will take the lead at 13 to 10. So they don't get a touchdown here on the opening drive of the third quarter, but I think maybe you still say mission accomplished as they come away with the lead. No, absolutely. You keep the pressure on, right? You go downfield, get some points up on the board, and hope that you've motivated your defense to take the field and hold that lead. Let's go. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. Those are the kinds of plays right there that show you why he's the number three man of the NFL in terms of receiving yards. Also tells you there's a full combination of what he's got going in his game. You name it, from route running to catching. The ball's out. McCaffrey lost it. And the Packers pick it up. And they are going to set up shop at the 32-yard line. Not the trend he wanted to start the season with a fumble loss in both weeks one and two. Now, it's not a disaster, but certainly not what he was looking for. Got to get that fixed because otherwise he shows up on every scouting report. I remember sitting in defensive rooms and hearing the scouting report from my coaches, and if someone had a particular problem carrying the ball and holding on to it, that was noted. Hey, make sure you give a little extra attention to him. Get after the football. He's dropped it the last couple of games. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Here's Matt. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. The second down play results in a loss of two yards. He has elite instincts from his linebacker spot. He's able to diagnose the run and flies in like a missile to stop that one behind the line of scrimmage. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. And the blitz does come. And here is a leaping catch. He pulled it in. Holding offense. And they were looking to throw. Holding on the big right tackle. That's real simple, partner. Keep your hands oh, no, inside no. in the chest area. You're probably okay. You get it out on the shoulders. Get them wide. You're usually going to pick up a holding call. They go play fake. Mahomes. He's going to look deep for more. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off down at the 10. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, I tell you, Brandon, this ball is intercepted, but it is third down. So the silver lining is that since this is so far down the field and there wasn't a big run back associated with it, really this kind of works like a punt. It's not an altogether bad result. Patrick Onwasor up to make the tackle. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Shotgun now for Breeze. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back. Complete. It's a four-yard pickup, and it'll be third down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did. And obviously, they liked his measurables. Otherwise, they would have brought him onto the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. Strip that ball. 36, 36. From the 27, Breeze over the middle. That's hauled in by Isabella. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Here's McCaffrey. And they're able to swarm him behind the line, and his rough night continues. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. On second down and four. Breeze into double coverage, and it's intercepted. 
Picked off by the linebacker, Raekwon McMillan. Ah, oh, Brandon, this is a veteran quarterback back there. He should know better than to make a throw like this. This is definitely not his best ball. And I think he knew this was trouble the second it was leaving his hand. He'll start on the ground with Mack. And he's going to take this across the 50 and into Saints territory. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. Out to the left, it's complete to Dyson. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. That'll set them back with a loss of three on the play. And that'll make it third down. Try to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. Back now at Lambeau. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point, just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. Here's Coleman on the draw. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. That good for 19 at the first down. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously. But at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that. But it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion. Down the numbers. There he goes. Touchdown, Packers. Marlon Mack with two touchdowns on the season, both in this game. And the Packers are able to stretch that lead out further. And he certainly played a pivotal role with those two TDs and why they're up on the scoreboard right now. Well, someone's all about winning, aren't they? Because he's not worried about the number. And sure, it's great to have two touchdowns. But the bottom line is what he's doing is contributing to their lead. He wants to continue to do so. After the roughing penalty on the PAT, they'll kick off from 15 yards further upfield. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll probably wish he'd reconsidered here. It will cost him 10 yards as he's down at the 15. Well, conventional football, football 101, tells us if you don't get it back to the 20-yard line on a kickoff return, that's a disappointment. But some of these team special teams coaches, with approval by the head coach, they give him full authority to go ahead and bring it out and try to be aggressive. Almost what we call the green light, red light there. Green light means go. Red light means stop. Looks like he had green on that play. First down yardage on the first play of the drive. Give him 14. Marie's now on first down. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long, and they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. They face a third and four after that last completion gets them six. They fake the give. Here's Breeze. Over the middle to Kittle, complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. He's up to 88 yards receiving in the ball game now, and he's got a first down. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple scores, and they've really got to get some yards in chunks, and they know the defense doesn't want to give those up, but they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. To throw again on second down. Breeze. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout. An injured player. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. So, signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Now, Breeze again. Over the middle, that 
that's caught by Metcalf. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Face Certainly mask. looked like it. Defense. Indeed, here come the flags. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all. And now your discipline comes into question. Hey, Having hey, poise hey. this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. Now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you... And it's intercepted at the goal line. Adrian Amos with a pick. And he's got daylight. It's a foot race. The 30. The 20. And into the end zone. It's a pick six and a Packer touchdown. And that one will pretty much erase any hopes of a fourth quarter comeback. With emphasis, interception, return for touchdown. Door closed, locked, reinforced. Now Crosby for the point after. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. This will be fielded at the eight. And he'll have good starting field position as he's up just shy of the 40. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. And following the pick six, and they have decent field position in throwing that pick six. We'll see how they attack this run. I think all you say to your guy is, listen, just take care of the football a little bit better. Make some better decisions on this drive, and they'll probably help him a little bit with maybe some really high percentage throws early. To let him get settled back yeah, in. But they told him, they told us, they've got confidence. That, that's not a problem. Yeah, not a problem at all. They just want to make sure they get things settled down a little bit for their offense and give their defense a little bit of a chance to rest. But now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. Here's Breeze to throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And this is going to result in another first down as the tackle's made at the Packers' 14. Now Breeze. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints' touchdown. A great effort there. With his second TD of the game, his sixth on the year. And the Saints make some inroads here to that deficit. Ruts good on the extra point, and that will shave one more off this lead. So that drive, four plays, and it all culminates in a Saints touchdown. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. And trotting back out onto the field, Travis Kelsey. And partner the defense, they were keyed in on him early, but his talent shining through as of late. I like what you said about keyed in because it all started in their first meeting of game planning for this game. Where they went over things with their team and said, all right, this is the guy we have to take out of the game. Make sure you get enough coverage on him, all the different defenses. Sometimes you run everything you've got in the first half and then adjust in the second half and start to play better. Throwing on first down is Mahomes. Into the hands of his running back, Marlon Mack. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Charles, you'd said the magic number was probably right around 20 for this defense because they're facing one of the top five offenses in the league in terms of points scored. They've had their moments, but... Uh, this offense, just a little too good, isn't it? They really are, because no matter what you do to make an adjustment on defense, they've had an answer for it. From 
the gun on third down, Mahomes. And he's taken down here by the Saints. Geno Atkins in there for sack number 85 of his great career, moving him past Hall of Famer Howie Long on the all-time list. Well, someone's closing in on the league lead in sacks. He came into the game in the top five. Now you add two more to his total. So possession goes over here on the punt. And possession will switch hands first and ten. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And we have seen a lot on the scoreboard here in this quarter. So you know, sometimes you talk to me about tendency breakers on offense. These defenses struggling. Are there tendency breakers on defense? All defensive coordinators keep something in their hip pocket for these types of situations. What can we do to slow down the onslaught? But the biggest thing is make sure these guys encourage each other, pick themselves up, because right now, it's been a really tough ball game trying to stop these offenses. Oh, it really has, especially as of late. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Now Breeze. He's going to look deep down the field. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. So now third and ten, a big play to start the drive, but nothing since. Again, it's Breeze. He'll rifle this one deep right side. And for the fourth time tonight, it's an interception. Picked off by Akeem Tlaib. And this one will be brought back to the 22. Just a little bit of a rough stretch. Six interceptions now in these last two weeks combined. I know the easy thing is to go back to mechanics, footwork, things of that nature. I'm also wondering, is he getting fooled by what he's seeing on defense? Has the scouting report changed? Are they showing him things different than what he expected? For the second week in a row, he's throwing it to the guys in the wrong color shirts. Yeah, he better figure whatever the reason is. He better figure it out. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. Now a throw for the All-Pro. Kelsey is complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45. 22 yards on the catch and run. A first down. This is something you got to be wary of defensively. I mean, just because they're in the mode of trying to burn some clock doesn't mean they won't pass it. They got good yardage out of that one. Yeah, and really, when you're looking at it, now they've got a fresh set of downs. Look for second down. If they want to take another shot and try and loosen things up, that'd be the time to do it. On first down, Mack. Tackle made there by the safety, Derwin James. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. So it's Packer football here as we welcome you back. And the scoreboard on their side, they're just looking to melt away these final couple of minutes and put this one in the left-hand column. On the jet sweep, here comes Moore. And he's going to be brought down inside the 45 at the 43. Pretty good running there, nine yards. Sets up a third and one. On third down, a run by Mack. And he's going to be met behind the line of scrimmage and taken down. Offense. And a penalty flag is going to come out on top of it. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Drew Brees in the offense. Down by 10, a minute 11 to go. And their four-game winning streak in great danger. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And that'll wind up incomplete. Try to give his man room to run under it, but it's second down. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. To throw is Breeze. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. That's incomplete. Nearly another pick. My goodness. 
Tried to go for the big one there on second down. Now they're likely down to their final two plays. And you know they've got to keep going for the big shot, right? So defensively, you play what they call top down. Nothing behind you. Make everything get completed in front. Now Breeze. And oh, they almost had another one. They are all over the football in this game. Nearly another pick. Now fourth down. Brandon, at least there's one bright side to that incompletion. What's that? It wasn't an interception. Wow. <laughs> you're, you're a nice guy. That was kind of savage. That correct. No, nope. And this is intercepted. And that should do it. Adrian Amos with a pick. And they will be set up now as he brings this thing all the way back inside the 20. Charles, whatever's going on between his ears right now, it's just not completely calculated correctly. Seven picks between last week and this week after that one. And they always say the most important part of a player is those six inches between the ears. But right now, it's all those interceptions that are going on. So whoever his trusted confidant is on the sidelines, I don't know if it's the offense coordinator, the quarterback's coach, maybe the backup quarterback, that's who he needs to get with now and get himself calm. Here's Mahomes now on the action right. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. And they just took a timeout with two seconds to go. This one obviously decided. Not sure they needed to take it, but we'll take it with them. The chance of wasting this great starting field position, a real threat. This is third and long. So it's all over. A Green Bay victory. And I think you'd have to label this an upset. Yes, they were at home, but still an upset. They got.